as you've no doubt been able to tell by the corners, we are going over one, one last uh, AlphaGo game. The reason why we're going over an AlphaGo game is because it occurred to me that, um, yeah, we haven't really gone over a game where AlphaGo was uh, white. So we are going to go over one last AlphaGo game where AlphaGo was white. Now you might notice in uh, the bottom right-hand corner over here, uh, that's not really the name of a professional, is it? That seems to be the name of an ID. However, you will note that there is a P on the end of that, denoting him as a professional. I do not know who the professional is. Um, maybe someone does. I simply don't. But he is a professional. Now, you may wonder, why on earth, when you have so many to choose from, would you take an unnamed professional? Why would you take an unnamed professional as your last AlphaGo game to go over? Because you've got games versus... I mean, what do you have? You have Park Chung wan I think you've got uh, games like against all the top pros, right? You could have selected any one of those. So why on earth did you select this one against someone who we don't know? Ryota-kun! Ah, uh, giving me the benefit of the doubt. Ryodakun is our uh, viewer of the day, I think. Exactly. I think the game is good, but it also follows a theme. If you remember the game we went over on um, Wednesday, and if you are a patron, there is another game that I will be uploading uh, to Patreon in the next couple of days for the bonus lecture. What I'm going over today kind of follows that, this idea of center influence. And we're going to see that idea reflected from White's play. So I think that's going to be really, really entertaining. So I don't care who uh, Black is. I carry the professional. I carry starts off in the upper right-hand corner uh, for four stone. And that's all I care about. White known also as the AlphaGo, takes a 4-4 point for himself, could try to fight it and open up 3-4 uh, facing for a diagonal move, but we don't. In this game, Black is just taking a 3-4 point for himself, allowing the AlphaGo to grab another 4-4. Black approaches. The idea here is we've got many options available to us. If we back off, we can go to a Kobayashi that you all know. We could go to Chinese, either low or high. If we were feeling really, really aggressive, we could do a double approach and see if we can't grow the framework. Well, at this point, I probably want to play it here grow the framework even larger. This is the kind of thing that... Um, let's see, how do, how do I politely say this? Like, I haven't played this in an even game where I felt I really, really need to win. I kind of play it when I want to mess with people. I guess it's, I mean, this is... It's, it's not a troll opening. It's, it's an opening that was used professionally. It's just one that I'm more comfortable with when there's a bit of a rank discrepancy than an even game. Ah, oh, watch your videos about uh, you ditching influence style as you progress through the rank. Did AlphaGo games make you reevaluate that a bit? No, not at all. Zero. Zip. Zilch. Reason why I ditched uh, the influence style is because it was just tricking people, and there were huge gaps in my play that I needed to do something about because I was progressing higher than I should be simply because someone didn't respond to a Joseki correctly or they did a dumb invasion and they died and I wasn't like learning anything so no I do not regret that at all I might be revisiting these next few weeks I might be revisiting the uh, influential style in my stream though I haven't decided yet Anyway, instead of responding to the approach, 
AlphaGo says, I'm approaching you. Black follows up and says, I'm going to follow up my approach to you then, because you are ignoring me, and I don't like being ignored. We now have a game of chicken to see who is going to ignore who longest. Unfortunately, black blinks first. I'd be really curious about a game that actually kept progressing this way. But alright. We've got this one, sorry. This would be my first instinct. Just to play here. But black is apparently a bit more of an aggressive player than uh, maybe you normally assume. He doesn't play this variation, he plays a variation where he's going to cut and slay the AlphaGo. So here we go, cutting. This stupid little computer that's killing everybody. Very, very aggressive play. Unfortunately, as you can see immediately, it offers a complete surround on your corner. So I like the aggression, but we are giving away influence here. Must not forget that little that little tidbit. Gonna get blocked. We defend here and not here, because it makes this a little bit less severe. With this on the board, for example, not really threatening anything uh, severe, are we? We can respond in a whole bunch of different ways. But if we have this on the board, it's threatening to control our shape into more. Now you might say, but what about this cut here? Does AlphaGo not see the cut? Oh my god, how weak is this program? I want my money back. But if you cut here, you're just going to eat one stone, and that's it, while we're giving away a solid wall. So that's not going to be an issue now, is it? So instead, we go this way. And AlphaGo just goes, doop 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 I'm getting myself a base. Could be tempted to try to kill something in here, but then you're getting complicated. And keep in mind, you're inviting a surround on your stones, while the cut still exists. So, why would you do that? Instead, we're just going to grab a base for ourselves. And then black follows up and encloses. Interesting game so far, if I have to say so myself. Looks like black's getting some influence from surrounding the corner. Looks like White wants some influence, not really certain uh, what's going to happen there with that influence. What's something with these uh, two stones? These two stones must do something. Not really sure what yet. This move is irritatingly annoying. And that sentence was amazingly redundant. Because now... We're kind of dealing with the cutting point, while at the same time, we are preventing an attack and an expansion from uh, Black's newfound influence. So that's 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 a move. It's a bit of a slack move, maybe, but it's a pretty good one. We've stabilized here, kind of blocking here, and we're forcing black to go back and live in the corner there. Pokey pokey pokes. And we block. And we connect. And we fix the stones a little bit. 
Actually, I forget. I forgot, actually. To you, it's a little bit reversed. Need to push the stones up a little bit higher to make it appear a bit more centered for you guys. There we go. So we've got that, and white jumps out now, going after two stones. However, black is not going to allow himself to be distracted by whatever white's doing here. He's going to simply go after the corner and uh, take his profit, which I, which I will admit um, is a little odd. I can see the rationale behind it. I mean, these stones aren't completely dead yet. We can go over here, for example, later on. We can go over here, for example, later on. So, if we could get some kind of like living shape here in the center of the board, then this wouldn't be too much. So why not go back and take this? And if our opponent simply goes back and kills off those stones right now, then that'd be maybe a little bit too small. So, okay. Uh, I can dig, I can dig, I can dig. Um, person who's following, thank you for following. Can't read your name from across the room, sorry about that. But I do appreciate the follow, sir, or ma'am. Oops, I knocked the stone off. There we go. So, uh, let's see, black just played here, so white is going to play here, because if black plays here, that's potential expansion and potential growth. So this is a pretty large move. We could play here, right, as white, but we're probably going to have to respond to this in some fashion, yeah? So although we're growing, we're allowing white to grow as well. So we've got kind of like the double uh, thing going on here. Like we can grow, but then he grows, and we have to deal with him, and then he's going to deal with us, and it kind of goes back and forth. So we're going to get rid of that and that. Instead, we just take away Black's growth. This is like the last large area he can grow, right? Using this to grow here is the last large area that uh, that Black can grow. However, especially with this move on the board right now, especially with this, with this little itty bitty move here, we can also like grow here now. We can still grow here. As a last resort, we can get a little bit more over here. So, black has now done lost. Easy places for growth. Bye bye growth. So we do the same thing to white. Take away the extension. And I imagine the next move, I would have assumed the next move was going to be here. Until I remembered, oh right, but this isn't dead yet. And a great way to turn this game completely around from what you're going to see occur is to allow this kind of running to take place so black can get really, really strong in the middle. So rather than that, I'm taking that away. <coughs> Sorry about that. So rather than allowing that, we take a two space for ourselves. I keep hitting that stupid thing. And now, if white wants to or black wants to run, we've got an attack in place. Saving the stones i I'm not sure when you mean. Saving the stones later would be really, really large given what you're going to see occur. Alright, so black gets his large uh, point on in. The extension from his enclosure, as you would guess. White says, is there Aji here? Black says, I don't care. I are reducing you. We have reductions now taking place. Now there are a lot of different ways that we can respond here. But this is where the game begins to get interesting. 
admittedly, it's a little bit interesting with what occurred in the lower left-hand corner. And I think there's a lot of uh, excellent direction of play value. Looking at moves like this, and these two, as well as taking the extension for ourselves. I think those are really nice um, direction of play moves. But now we need to make decisions. Direction of play in the opening, not all that hard to, uh, to find, right? Usually involves like, well, who's got a wall? Which way is it facing? Let's go and do something about that. Who's got an enclosure? Which way is it facing? Let's do something about that. Are there open corners that haven't been approached? Okay, let's go off, do something about that. Is there a move that my opponent didn't respond to? All right, let's follow that up. Things like that. Kind of, It's not that difficult to um, learn opening direction of play. The middle, though, is going to get very interesting. Starting with here. We could play this and allow black to settle. We could play for territory here, is what I'm saying. However... Playing for territory would not at all do anything about the fact that we played for influence over there. So we are not going to do this. This is not a move that we are going to see. This is not a move that we are going to see. This is not a move that we are going to see. We're going to see none of these moves. AlphaGo plays a little bit of a slack move to play here. Doesn't apply a ton of pressure. And it's about the most obvious stone on the board you can ever come up with. It's like, I, I'm just going to extend into the, into the middle, because that's where... That, I, got, I got middle stuff over there. But we've got this, and we've got this, so Black says, this move is just too slack. I'm just going to reduce you right now. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see what, what, what you're doing here, Mr. White. White responds. Black says, I'm just going to Attack you here, I guess. It's like, all right, all right, I'm, I'm under attack now. I think personally, maybe he should have made this a little bit higher. Lean on this just for safety's sake, rather than allow this to jump out. I would have liked to have been on top of this stone. Because now we see black trying to live when I think he should be coming out into the center. Follow up. Let's not get killed in the corner. Follow up. Let's not let him run away. Drop him down. Let's try to keep that killed. Cutting point. It's very interesting, though, these moves. White's clearly looking for something. Okay, I feel really bad for Ranchani right now. AlphaGo teaches us you don't need fancy moves to win, and now we're seeing this take place in the bottom left-hand corner. It's like, yeah, it looks like we're trying to get fancy now, huh? Cutting point, threatening to kill the corner. Knock stones out of alignment. I do it every game. 
now are connecting. Again, threatening to kill. Or Atari away at freedom, rather. But Black has got a vice-like grip on these stones. He is not going to let them go. Getting some RG, getting some RG. Threatening a double Atari. More forcing moves. Plays this instead of this, because we can see what, what uh, white's after right now. White's after the influence, and if we play here, they're going to give a lot larger wall to white. So that would be a bit of an issue, potentially. So I guess he played here to avoid. So from this game, where we can see that white is clearly uh, influence-oriented, where we can clearly see white happy well, I shouldn't use the term happy, where white uh, couldn't find a way to connect out, so he's now sacrificing the stones in order for more influence. Uh, it's a little bit reminiscent of what we saw with uh, Li Cheng Ho's game recently, and that we're just going to uh, kind of sort of give things up for more uh, influence. That trend continues. We're going to put pressure on this group. and surround said group. Form is meant around a 4-4 stone and black still struggles against it. Um... Is it really a struggle when it was always dead? I mean, it's got Aji, sure. Curry's cutting point. Don't let him cut through. This is looking a little bit scary now. Because I don't really know where this is going. Cutting point. Ah, G. White defends this way. It allows black to attach to threaten to capture the three stones in the center. So white is going to block this way. Black threatens to connect. This is making white more solid in the middle before finally connecting underneath. Kill off the two stones, make sure that there's no Aji there. Make sure you're connected nice and solidly. Free Atari. And now white gets a free move for the middle of the board. So, very influential game here. Sacrificed a few stones to get it, but very influential game here. And you can see how important that was. Like, we can't really play this kind of game if we hadn't already extended here. Because, like, we would be extending here now, and then potentially just getting reduced immediately. So it's another reason what makes uh, this extension really, really large. And if we had played somewhere else right now and we hadn't done that, then drawing out these cutting stones would be even larger for ensuring that nothing really occurs in the center. So I got the extension here. 
jump up in the middle here. Uh, let's see, chat, 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 chat. What is going on here? Um, too bad B couldn't punish, right? Doesn't B12 let white build a wall anyway? What is B12? Uh, one moment, I have to look at the, uh, the stream, actually, to see what B12 is. I don't have coordinates on my board, clearly. Um, B12 is, 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 that, I think? Here, yeah, it does. However, you have to be a bit more careful about B12, because it also uh, gives uh, Aji remaining. I mean, do you cut this now? If you take advantage of B12, do you cut that? If you cut that, doesn't that allow for a bit of a push-in? This has got to be the messiest game I've gone over now. Jesus Christ, I do not like where the stones are. I formally apologize. Ugh, such a mess. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, it's a human reaction to do that. Wait, what? At, okay, most storytellers are SDKs. I have no idea. Then we try to play the best move its opponent offers. Uh, yeah, that's what we were mentioning. It was poking around back here to see if it could live, and once it realized it could not live, then it tried to sacrifice it to get the most out of the stones that it invested. Uh, as actually, as I mentioned previously, it not uh, having a preference is a little bit why I'm not overly enthusiastic about uh, AlphaGo. The preference is a very human thing. Uh, it was actually C12, my bad, but you just played two black stones in a row, didn't you? Crap. Did I? Alright, I'm editing most of this out of the video. I played here. We played here. Uh, oh yeah, like I said, if you don't, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said if we don't respond here again, right? So this is Gote to defend against it, right? Whereas if we play here, if we play the simple Atari, then that Sente, right? And then we're pretty good after that, because at worst Black's gonna follow up with this after he takes, which is just another Atari. So there's like no break in here. But if we don't follow up that little uh, nose hit, whatever the heck it's called, if we don't follow this up, then black breaks into the middle with the Hane and then the lean in, right? Hane cut and then come in. So that's what I was referring to. And the difference between uh, this little triangle and um, the Atari, right? There we go. All right, I think we're back to that now. All righty, so we've got this. And now, I'm actually a little bit surprised in the direction this game goes right now. 
Because I would be thinking, all right, time to play something in the center. This area is getting kind of large. Black, on the other hand, is like, I'm going to connect up my stones on the second line. I think now is a great time to play on the second line while my opponent is trying to take all the middle for itself. Now here's a question, people. Since we are going to be seeing more and more influence games uh, now as a result of the old AlphaGo, where do you think you would play right now for a nice influential move for white? Influential move for white. Where's it going to be? Where's it going to be? Need an influential move. They're easy to find. One thing about influence games, um, maybe some of the sacrifices aren't easy to find. But this kind of development is the easiest thing to find in your games. It's so easy. P10 or something? Um, think Sente. 09? I think that's... I th if I'm reading this board right, O is there, so no. Um, P, Q... Is it Q? Not quite. Not quite. So, nice sente moves are shoulder hits, right? Your opponent's going to probably respond to a shoulder hit. And attachments. Shoulder hits and attachments. Uh, I will agree with that. Wait, maybe I'm wrong. No, I think you're right, and I'm wrong. I think I'm reading the board incorrect. Sorry, I can't read all the way over there. It's uh, still a little blurry for me. Sorry, whoever, whoever said this move, you're correct. Yeah, whoever said Q9, which I think is a lot of you, congratulations, you got it right. Uh, shoulder hit, or sometimes even the uh, flat-out attachment here, are just good for forcing moves. Because your opponent's going to respond to them since you're damaging their stone, right? And doesn't want you playing like a drop-down into... Extend into Hane once or maybe even twice. Because that's a complete lockout of the middle at that point. Extend Hane, Hane, Hane. So black extends here. White's like, okay, going to my friends. I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll meet you there. Black's like, all right, I'm coming with you. I have, a, I have a bone to pick with them. It's like, all right, well, they're um, they're they're right this way. Now we can't really do much else here, right? If we actually extend again, we're gonna get Hane into Hane because these three stones are really strong at this point. So this is about as far in as we're gonna be able to go. Connecting up. Yes, connect on up. Connect up that third line. White's just connecting up his stones as well. What a coincidence! Black's connecting his stones, white's connecting his stones, everyone's happy. Threatens to come in. Uh, G. Tries to remain in. Whoa, that stone's got a really flat er side. It's got like a dent in the bottom of it. Connects. Cut starting to capture. Trying to break on in. Oops, I'm sorry. And Atari. Trying to break on in. Looks like we're marginally successful now. And with this break in, we have to keep in mind that these two stones now are in trouble. 
there's some Aji over here. It looks like this game really isn't going too terribly for uh, black, right? White connects up. Black scoffs and says, I'm in the middle now. I do not care. But unfortunately, this is also a game of counting. And giving that territory to our opponent is actually very, very large. It's actually incredibly large. Because we're really, really low here. Our upper left-hand corner is not that large. We're kind of low over here. So, white's picking up points. Sure enough. Don't get, uh... Don't think he's not. White is picking up them points. Files back for territory. Just keeps the opponent out of his area. We get a little bit of a poke, and we draw back, and a little bit of a poke, and now we get blocked. Black connects, trying to get the solid territory for himself. White's fine with it. Just going to take his territory for himself while black expands his corner. So we've got a lot of territory on the right hand side. I actually connected it all up with his uh, initial probe here, which is interesting. But the middle. Um, <laughs> the middle is um, like here right now, which is kind of big. Kinda big, not gonna lie. Has to connect on up here. Otherwise we can get cut later. There's a lot of Aji here. So white just takes the center. La 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 la. Pokey pokey poke. Threatens to come on in. Just kind of denied. If you're playing an influential style, I should point out, if you're trying to like mimic this kind of thing, you can see how important shoulder hits are. I mean, your opponent plays a move, and you can shoulder hit it. Your opponent plays a move, and you can shoulder hit it. Your opponent played a move, and we shoulder hit it. Right? Shoulder hits are very, very uh, good when you're trying to play like this kind of influential uh, style of play. Black takes corner. Keeps him low. Gonna go ahead and surround. Still picking and poking away at white. Still poking away. Oops, wrong stone. There we go. Pretty big. They are very easy to understand moves. They're easy to find. I don't care if you're a 10Q. If you're trying to play for influence, you can find a low stone and shoulder hit the crap out of it. And we connect. And we try to reduce. And just looking for the RG. Where that RG hiding? No RG to be found, so we just go and take some stones for ourselves. Going underneath. 
looking for a way to get some stuff done. Have to play here, which means we get a free Atari in, which means we have to connect, which means we get to take, or connect, sorry. So it's pretty decent. It's a pretty decent little invasion. White counters. Black ignores. White's putting pressure, threatening to capture the stones. We're running out of liberties here. So we connect on up. Now we have a problem because we can't connect that one up. One, two, three liberties here. If we plop a stone here now, then we're in trouble. So despite what we just got away with on top of the board, it's kind of undone by this now. Because we have to go back and play here. Which means this is also sente. While we play here. And then this is going to be sente. Taking a stone in sente is kind of nice. While we get the stones off the board. So we did that, which was kind of nice. But we lost a stone there. We lost the two stones there, which means that's now territory as well. And it was all sadly in Sente. Rather than the continue out of the game at this point, Black goes ahead and resigns. Just can't quite make up that center. Can't quite make up that center. Had a good run. Had a good run. But game ends. Which answers the question of does this game come down to Comey? Mm, doesn't go that far. I mean, counting wise. So, the reason why I picked this game is because it was a very, very blatantly obvious uh, center strategy, which we kind of see reflected in some of the. Uh, recent matches, such as Li Cheng Ho's and the one we went over uh, yesterday, dear patrons. And one example to see how we're getting that kind of strategy and attributing it to something that AlphaGo has been doing is to see a game like this. This whole uh, all-in center strategy that's actually seemingly working seems to work. So if you wonder um, where that's coming from, given the previous two games that we went over didn't really uh, deal with that very much, uh, there, there are other games like this that go along a similar vein. Not necessarily with AlphaGo, it's white, mind you. But there are similar games that uh, AlphaGo's been playing, similar to this, that uh, are rather influence-oriented. And I wanted to showcase one of those games as white, not as black, as white, since we haven't gone over one of those before. So this one against dear old uh, Adamy over here. I, I thought did it uh, fairly well, fairly well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I am now done with AlphaGo. I know, so sad, don't care. Uh, next week I am going to go over someone else's game. Uh, I haven't quite decided who that's going to be. I might hit up some more Dosaku and look at a different Go Legend. Back from an earlier time. So I, was, I was actually enjoying those games. I don't know if you guys were, but I was enjoying those games. And I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of the AlphaGo. So I think I'm going to call it quits there for a bit. I'm going to call it quits there for a bit and look at other people because believe it or not, other people exist and have existed throughout Go. I'm going to cover some of them. I'm going to cover some of them a lot. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So I will see all you fine folks tomorrow. <laughs>